A Look at Finance is underwritten by Jannie Montgomery Scott, trusted advisors for generations. Welcome back to Look News. Stephen Carlton, first Vice President Jenny Montgomery Scott. A happy new year to you, Thanks, sir. Thanks, David. Happy new year to you, too. Good to have you here. Our first segment of 2014. Good time. And it's a cold one. It's a, it's a cold and snowy <laughs> one. Um, it's, it's horrible out there, so I'm glad you're joining us at home. Yeah. Um, looking forward to the year to come. 2014, the year to come. A, a really active year gone by. Let's start with the markets. Mm. Coming off a record year. Yeah. Um, a little bit of bad news on this first day of trading of 2014. Well, you know, it's it, the last since 2008, we've had a positive uh, first day of the year. And so we were down over 130 points in the Dow. So we had a negative open on the first day. But it's the first day of the year. Not much to read into that, right? I, I, I think we have to be careful reading too much into it. It's an interesting fact point, but it's just the first day of the year. Yeah, as I said, markets coming off a record year. Where mm. are these markets going to go in 2014? Can they continue this growth that they've had over the last year? You know, every year, the last couple of years, we've had slightly lower expectations than what we've actually realized. And we've had several years of really positive growth. I mean, we're talking 30% growth for a lot of people in the, in the, in the market. So, you know, I think the growth area, we're going to have a positive market. I think there's a lot of good positive indicators, you know, a lot of things working for us. But uh, I think those expectations of, of numbers like we saw last year might be a little bit too exuberant. All right. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the markets in just a moment. We want to kind of see, obviously, in 2013, we didn't see the success of the markets trickle down to Main Street mm. as much as it should have. We'll talk about that in just a second. But, of course, the other big story of 2013 mm. and heading into 2014 is uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. It's and live today. It's live today. Yeah. Um, the impact that that could have on our economy. You know, it, the one thing that seems to be constant, whether you talk to the liberals or the Democrats, I mean, the Democrats or the conservatives, left or right, I don't think there's a lot of uh, clarity on what's going to happen. I think there's a lot of instability right now, a lot of insecurity about what's going to be. I think the hospital's a little nervous about the rollout. Uh, this is incredibly complicated. There's been some some problems in the rollout. So, yeah, it, it's it, it could be a real wild card in 2014 with consumer spending, the cost of the average consumer. I think it's it's a real unknown for this year. Yeah, the real unknown is that if you don't have health insurance, you're potentially going to have to pay for it depending on your econo your income. You're going to have to pay um, one way or the other. One way or the other. Yeah. So if you're you know if you lower economic bracket, you may get a helping hand, or mm -hmm. most likely get a helping hand. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the middle class, you're probably going to get socked with a bill per month for your health insurance. And, yeah, and, and that's, that that's a, you know, whatever that dollar value is, that's money that's not going into your savings account, not going towards the mortgage, or not being spent at the supermarket. Yeah, you know, over the holidays, I've heard a lot of people talking about this, not necessarily over turkey or over Christmas dinner, but in the coffee shops, talking and passing and stuff like this, you know, small business owners talking about what that means for them. And I think the people that are going to feel it the most is, is just like you said, David, it's the middle class. Uh, I think the lower income families are going to benefit from the, the subsidies, the, the, the credits that they get, you know, that it'll be more, much more affordable. But for the average family that doesn't have it, has to purchase it this year, uh, a lot of them are coming back surprised at just how much it, it, it actually costs. I think there's a perception by some that it was going to be free or that the government was just going to give it to them. And, and a lot of people have been surprised waking up realizing it's actually something they have to buy. Yeah, thinking about the model of the United Kingdom or Canada mm. uh, where they have universal health care. Of mm. course, they pay for that through taxes, but perhaps not as much as we could be paying out of pocket here in the United States for a similar um, health care yeah. system. Yeah, it's, it's consumer spending. It's going to come out of their, their paycheck, whatever's left. And so that's what the big concern going into 2014 is how much of a drag will that be on consumer spending. Yeah, how much more can people take? Yeah. Uh, interest rates, as we head into 2014. You say mm -hmm. we should be looking at uh, housing, consumer spending, and the public and private debt. Yeah, when we look at the Treasury rate, we look at 10-year Treasuries. They were about 1.5% last year, all the way up to just under 3%. Um, interest rates have come a long way, and they've gone higher, which is not good for the consumer in general. When it comes to them applying for car loans or mortgages, lines of credit, their credit cards, all those things, the higher the interest rate, the higher their payments are going to be on a monthly basis. So the, the interest rate level that we're at right now, Janet Yellen, who's going to be the Fed chairman replacing Ben Bernanke starting January 31st, her primary responsibility and, and a huge challenge for her is to try to navigate this uh, handoff and to try to keep interest rates stable, which is going to be incredibly challenging for her, I think, in this year. Yeah, Janet coming into the end of January. Not a lot of talk about her. Uh, it's going to the... ramp up. But yeah, it's been very quiet, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure the fire will be stoked. 
pretty soon here as she gets yeah. into, into, in, into her position. As we were saying earlier about the markets coming off this record year, a lot of that success and that wealth was not felt on Main Street. Uh, mm -hmm. Folks are struggling mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to make ends meet. Do you think this is the year that we could finally see some of that trickle down in, you know, to help folks that are, are, are struggling? You know, there, there sure is a lot of hope that that will be the case. You know, we've talked a lot this year about, you know, livable wages and, and talked about, you know, trying to measure people in Saratoga County, you know, Washington, Glens Falls. And the feedback that I'm getting is it really hasn't trickled down. Am I hopeful that it will? You know, it's, it's, it's challenging, and I don't see a lot of indicators just yet, but that is the intention of Janet Yellen, is to try to focus more on Main Street, more on the average American. So my fingers are crossed, and I think the nation's ready to start to see that focus shift more that direction. It'll in, be interesting to see if that happens a year from now as we head into 2015. That's right. We'll be talking about this year for sure. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see that. We've got a couple of footnotes for, uh, for you tonight. Um, consumer spending over mm -hmm. the Christmas holidays. We mm. should be getting those numbers soon. That's a real strong indicator to how the economy is doing. Yeah, I mean, we talked about all the deals going into the Christmas season, the big, big discounts by the retailers and everything else. Amazon, huge orders going into the Christmas season. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get an indicator on how healthy was consumer spending in the holidays. So that'll be really important to look at. Yeah, already, as I, as I was doing my Christmas shopping, because I wait to the last minute, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things were discounted. Huge. Going into Christmas already, yeah. and usually yep. you wait for those sales after Christmas. Yep. Um, but a lot of stuff was just really, you know, was was already sharply discounted. Before. Very competitive. They started earlier than they did in, in previous years, and they went right down to the wire. Uh, it's still kind of mixed reporting about how strong this was this season. But you're right, retailers, whether it was Target, Walmart, all across the board had a discount dramatically to bring uh, consumers in. And Christmas shopping was without its problems. Target with their, their data breach, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, UPS and FedEx having trouble getting the packages to the front door. Yeah, the, the volume was just, uh, you know, UPS was saying up 40% beyond what their expectations that they'd built in. So that was a pretty good indicator as far as, you know, spending when it comes to web purchases. So yeah. the shift to that. Um, but yeah, uh, th all those numbers, all those things we need to look at to see what 2014 is going to be like. You are a big car guy. Mm -hmm. You yes. love your yes. cars. You love yeah. your speed. Mm -hmm. And um, news today that Chrysler is now owned by the Italians, Fiat. Isn't it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because if, whether you've got a Dodge Charger or a Challenger, maybe you've got the Dodge Ram pickup truck or the Durango, th these are American cars that we've, we've, we've grown to love and grown to know and get used to. Well, Fiat bought a majority share. And we've just announced today that they bought the last remaining percentage share. So now they are, Dodge Chrysler is owned now by Fiat, which is an Italian car making company. What do you, you know, obviously you've got, you know, your finger on the pulse of what's happening mm. in the car industry just because of the fact you're an enthusiast about this. Do, could we see some big changes coming to Chrysler or will it be more of the same? You know, I, I think there are more and more changes. We're going to see the designs become a little bit more creative. I think the, the, the ability to consolidate a lot of the operational costs are going to benefit because now they can do investment in the plants and the technology. A lot of that sharing of technology is going to be huge. Are we going to see a Ferrari-like looking vehicle coming to Dodge anytime soon? I don't think so. <laughs> but it will definitely be interesting. We'll see it in fuel ratings and those kinds of things for sure. And definitely Fiat in Europe is making, you know, some, some vehicles that you know, we saw it on the the road with the Fiat 500. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Some smaller vehicles, some yep. more fuel efficient vehicles, yep. and and that Alfa seems, Romeo. Yeah, some, some interesting seems, cars coming up. And Alfa Romeo, is some nice cars yep. used to be sold in this country and yep. then uh, have been gone for many years. Coming we, back, we could see excellent. Yep. Well, then they got some nice little cars that really could shake things up with the American motor company. Maybe we can find a way for us to take one for a test drive. Wouldn't All that right. be fun? Yeah, <laughs> when, the, when the first Alfa Romeo uh, dealership opens in the capital I'll region. see what I can do. All right, you work that out. Thanks, David. <laughs> Stephen Carlton, first <laughs> vice president. Janny Montgomery Scott, thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure. Now to see this look at finance segment and all our segments, if you want to take a look back at the year that has been 2013, you can head to our website. It's looktvonline.com. And stay with us. Coming up next, I've got a recap of today's top stories. I've also got a final look at your snowy forecast. We'll be right back.